President John Kennedy has famously said, Ask not what your country can do for you, but rather what can you do for your country? Hi, this is Barry Phillips of 10 Minute Tour, Dana One, a tour portion, Yitro. This tour portion opens up with the restoration, the reconciliation of Moshe with his father in law, Yitro, his wife, Sapora, and their sons, Gershom and Eliezer. Let's skip over the family reunion portion, which is important, but for today, let's focus on uh, the, the latter portion of this chapter where Moshe demonstrates before his father-in-law the judication process that he goes through on a daily basis. He teaches Torah, he teaches laws, he teaches understanding, and then he judicates between quarreling parties. Now, we're not told what kind of issues are coming up, but Moshe handles everything from he said, she said, to they put their tent peg on my side, uh, their goats at my front door, and they won't come get it, and all of that kind of thing, to the more serious issues uh, that might lay in store. So Moshe is sitting and the people are standing before him for hours and hours. And Yutro says, this is not a good idea. This is bad management. Now, it's a proven fact that a team will outperform an individual almost every time. Uh, working together means you get things done. And thinking about this particular video, I was thinking about the construction of my home here. Uh, some uh, two decades plus ago, a contractor uh, was hired to build this house, but he did not do much of any of the work himself. He hired somebody to frame it, and then there was someone that did the plumbing, and then there was someone that did the electrical work, etc. cetera. Um, he had a variety of people who had a variety of skills to do their skill set and perform their abilities to make the house become a home. When you're leading a congregation, oftentimes in, in churches and in Hebrew Roots congregations, it is dependent upon a strong personality out front with some sense of uh, perceived knowledge and ability and to ability to function in a variety of roles. And I can tell you that as a leader of uh, a, a Torah-based community and being a pastor for many years, it's very easy to acquire a lot of hats from the hat that, or the one who cleans the church to the one who changes the light bulbs and does other maintenance to the one who does all the teaching and all the preaching and choir leading and uh, music programming and anything else is getting done, you will wear yourself out. Moshe, this is not good. You need to establish men who can help you. And he says in Exodus Shemot chapter 18, verse 21, but you yourself seek out from all the people able men and here are their qualifications. They are able, they fear Elohim, men of truth, men who hate unfair gain. Able, believing, fearing, and hating unfair gain. If you can find such men, put them in positions, and he said, place them over rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, of fifties, and rulers of tens. Now, watching this video, you may say, well, you know, I'm not called to teach. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I don't know enough. I guarantee you that if you will set yourself apart to being faithful to your congregation, that means that you not only show up, but you show up early. And you ask consistently, what can I do to help? If you're a part of a congregation 
that does set up and tear down every time that you meet for Shabbat. You're, you know, you're a part of a group that meets in a fellowship hall or a rented building of some sort. Show up early and lend a hand. And that means going out to the parking lot and helping carry stuff in and setting it up. And if you stick around and say, I'll help carry it back out, I'll, I'll, I'll help. If you're physically able to do that, and then you go to whoever is in your leadership and say, is there anything else I can do to make what we do better? I have hands. I have a willing heart. What do you need me to do? Now, it may be just logistical, moving things and supplying things and setting up things. But there are also those that are in need of being planners. That is, you cast some sense of vision. Is it possible that our congregation should could do a certain project? The, the wrong way is to go to your leader and say, I think we ought to do, and I, I don't understand why we're not doing it. Wrong approach. Rather, go to your leadership and say, I've got an idea if you'd like to hear it. Submit yourself. Offer yourself. When you have ideas, they may be rejected. Well, if they the idea is rejected, it's not that you yourself have been rejected. Don't take it personal. But again, when you have another idea, well, I've got another idea if you'd like to hear it. And offer your ideas. Somewhere, someone will say, you know what, that is a good idea. And then when they agree to, that's a good idea, then volunteer. What can I do to help us to get this accomplished? Be a part of the planning. Be a part of the follow-through. Not everybody can lead a thousand people. Very, very few people can. As a matter of fact, if one is standing in front of a thousand or more, then more than likely their role is an inspirational role. It's very unlikely that they're going to be any any part of the hands-on equipping and ministering. But if you're over a group of 10 or over a group of 50, 50 is about the maximum to where one individual can do hands-on leadership, where they can pull individuals and train them and equip them and enable them to do something more than just sit in the chair and raise their hands and worship. That is, they're a part of the function of the group. They're a behind-the-scenes person or maybe someone out front. When you get to 100, you're needing help. Matter of fact, if you get over 50, you're needing help. It's not really good that a leader be seen as a superstar who can do everything. In our own congregation here at House of David, I was doing everything. I was blowing the shofar. I was opening up. I led all of the worship. I lit the menorah. I did all of the teaching. I did all of the praying. I did everything. It's not that I couldn't do it. I knew how to do everything that I was doing, but it was not good because I was wearing myself out. But even more importantly, I was preventing other people from having a role. And God corrected me. Barry, it's time for you to push men up, elevate them, give them their responsibilities, open the opportunity for them to do their part. So that's what I've tried to do, and I'm needing to do more. And I've had to let go of some things that maybe I wanted to hold on. I want to do that, but I've been able to trust other people to step up and do it. Now, would they do it exactly as I would? I've told them how I thought it ought to be done. What I would like to see is an outcome, but then you do it. And then letting men do what they're called to do, it has made everything better. Volunteer to your local congregation if you have one. If you're meeting by yourself with just a handful, seek every way possible to be a servant. Learn and share. Find something new. Look for something more refreshing. Offer a different vantage point. Make the tea. Make Serve the cookies. Whatever you need to do. Be a servant. 
Moses were being worn out, and we need some help. Until tomorrow, shalom.